Hello. Thank you for coming here. I know it's very early, and I know today, uh, yesterday was uh, there was a welcome party. So I really appreciate that you are here. And I would like to thank organizers that I have this opportunity to give that presentation to you. So my name is Paweł Bogdan, and I, I work as sof a staff software engineer in Grid Dynamics. And I program, I'm a programmer, programmer in Scala and Java. So I have many years of experience in Java developing, but since I joined Grid Dynamics, I have started programming in Scala, and I really like it. Uh, one of the funny facts of me, I earned a PhD in mathematics. I, I, I know that it's totally irrelevant for, from the perspective of the presentation, but I like, I like sharing that information about myself. And one more funny fact about me, I like listening to hard rock during coding, because without it, uh, coding doesn't go that well. And today I would like to talk about ACCA, because as you probably know, ACCA is, is the framework po for Scala, written in Scala. However, it's possible to develop Java applications using ACCA. And that, that, that's basically the main topic of my presentation. But before I go to, I reach this point, I would like to talk about Spring because I totally understand that Spring is uh, corporate and uh, this is standard of creating web applications in Java. Uh, I will discuss synchronous and asynchronous ways of communications between services. And then I, I start talking about ACCA. After that, I have prepared some bonus, some surprise. I hope you will like it. So let me ask a question to you. Who program in Java. Okay, I see majority of us. Does, does anybody program in Kotlin? Okay, not that bad. So, and who doesn't use Spring? Micronaut doesn't count. Oh, really? So what do you use? Dagger, nice. So, okay, I see that that it's not only Spring, but as, as far as I see, majority of you use Spring. So, uh, so let, me, let me show the examples of Spring, Java Spring applications, which uses synchronous and asynchronous way of communication. So just for, for, uh, for being on the same page, le let me remind, let me, let me uh, show the slide about synchronous communication. So, in this, let's say, I believe the most common case, we have thread pool, which uh, uh, handles requests, but, uh, sorry, thread pool of application, and only part of this thread pool uh, handles requests incoming to this, to this uh, service, to this application. And the, the thread, if thread starts handling the, co the, the incoming request, and it needs to wait for response for some another resource, that thread is blocked and it cannot be used to any other action. So as you, this is, let's say, very easy to implement, but in some cases it's not efficient and performant. So, but uh, again, I believe this is the most common case we use in our daily, daily life. So I prepared uh, some, some example and I will follow this example. I will adapt this example in, in the further part of this lecture. So as you can see, I use REST controller uh, annotation and I inject web template. As you probably know, web template is synchronous uh, HTTP client provided, provided by Spring. And I have three endpoints. Uh, so I, I define the root path for all of my endpoints, and I have three endpoints. First one is hello, which just return welcome, welcome spring, hello spring string. The second one is wiremock, and this wiremock endpoint just calls dummy, dummy request to the wiremock, which, which is somewhere in my system. And the first one is the very, let's say, 
lazy endpoint, but it provides, uh, it shows the feature of pr reading arguments, parameters of the request from several places. So as you can see, this endpoint returns info object, and this info object is populated with the data read from path, from the get request, get parameter, and also for from the HTTP header, uh, request header. So as you can see, reading those parameters using Spring is very easy. And we will see that that it's not always the case. Okay, and and the very simple configuration when I, where I uh, configure web template and to, to do that I use uh, I use REST template template builder which is provided by Spring and I read configuration from properties file. Just that's very easy. And as you can see here, I created this web template. Very easy. And the, the, this magic of Spring is that the, this is the only this is the only code I need to write to run application. So this annotation and this this one instruction in main method is good enough. All the magic is done by Spring inside. So I'm not very very big fan of this annotation magic, but I believe I'm I'm the minority of the developers. So and that's why I I hate Lombok because I I hate Lombok. Uh, so yes, this is very very uh, very hmm, brave phrase, uh, but I w I would love to discuss that topic after the presentation. Okay, so that was very simple example of a standard synchronous web application created in Spring Spring uh, Spring Web, and. If if uh, you hear asynchronous communication, I believe the first thing coming to your mind is using some message broker like Kafka or I don't know RabbitMQ. But but I would like to show you that HTTP also can be used as asynchron to to asynchronous communication. In that that case, we have this thread pool again. And very very small amount of threads from the thread pool is used to are used to handle requests, and it works that way that the when the request the the thread needs to communicate with some uh, external resource, uh, it doesn't it doesn't wait. It just call the the request and register the callback. And as, as soon as the request is handled by this external resource, uh, that tr this callback is, is executed and the, the application knows about the results of this external resource. And, and uh, this is implemented using event, to event loop. So we have the event queue and we have very intensive operation platform. And we process single event, so we send this request to this intensive operations platform, and we register callback, and we immediately the, the thread immediately starts doing something else. And as soon as as this operation is executed, uh, the the callback is triggered, and this everything is implemented using event loop. And as you probably can think. It's much more complicated than this ordinary, usual, synchronous approach I, I showed before. However, it's more efficient, especially when this external platform really performs heavy computation and the, the time of processing this, this, this request by this external platform is very long. And I checked it myself, and the performance is much better in case of using this asynchronous communication. And again, Spring is a very big framework, and it contains a module which helps us to implement that kind of communication very easy. This framework, this, this module is called WebFlux, and of course we can create REST controller this in the same way we do in case of the synchronous uh, Spring Web, a uh, Spring Web module, but I would like to show you some alternative. So I can define this, this and this application 
endpoints of this application using functional approach. And as you can see here, I have a configuration when I create single bin, and this bin is of type rotor, rotor function. And this rotor function is used to, uh, to define roots. So this is, let's say, be, uh, I don't speak endpoints, I speak roots, because this is the new naming, but it means uh, the same thing. And I use builder rot rotor functions class to build those, uh, to add endpoints and build the whole root. And again, as, as in previous example, I provide the root of the path for all endpoints, and I add all the endpoints in the same way using the same naming. So I have this hello endpoint, which is handled by this function handle hello endpoint. Again, I have wire mock, which is handled by client, web client, I, I am injected to that, that class. And in the, in the end, I have this test ID, which is handled again by the method from, from this class. And let's take a look at, brief look at those methods defined here. So as you can see here, the ta returned type of this function is mono of server response. Mono means that it is callback for one single value. In case we want to re return many more than one value, we use flux, web flux. And as you can see, I, I here I build the response using server response class. I provide a response with status 200, and I provide the value hello hello spring. Uh, the the second second endpoint provide uh, handle, handled in that class is why uh, this test endpoint, and again I return mono mono of server response and I built the server response basing on the incoming request. As you remember in the previous example, I extract values from header, from get parameter, and from path. So again, I can do that using this request object. So as you can see, I have path variable, query parameter, and also header. And using those values, I built info object. And maybe let's take a look at the, this cl client. And again, I am using web client builder. And again, this is asynchronous HTTP client provided by Webflux. And I build it using those parameters from uh, properties of the application. And here, as you can see, I also, this method handle, handle request also provides those, uh, provides mono of server response. And this response is from get method on this client. And I parse, I, uh, I modify this client response to, 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 uh, to match the response of this endpoint. And of course, the same, the same thing in the main method, main class. So I have the Spring Boot application and the same body of main method. So I believe so far everything is clear. So now I would like to talk about this ACCA framework. And maybe one thing before I go, go to the code. ACCA is based on actors concept. So we don't use threads directly in ACCA. We use actors. And actor is some, uh, an object we can communicate with asynchronously. So this uh, communication between actors is more similar to communicating between humans. So if you want to ask uh, to schedule a meeting with somebody, you just send this request, hey, I need to schedule a meeting with you. And after that, after that, I need to wait until this person I want to meet with provide the time when she or he is available. So basically, ACCA implements that, that philosophy, that, that, that approach. But fortunately, uh, we don't need to interact that, at that low level of actors, because ACCA, similarly to, to Spring, provides many modules. And one of those modules is ACCA HTTP, which provides us functionality 
to define routes. Routes, in the, the very similar way I, I showed in case of we Spring Web Flux. So again, let me show the code. So I define this Akka routes class, and this class extends all directives. And this all directives class uh, provides the methods I used inside, inside my method create routes. And similarly to all of my previous examples, I define API v1 as a prefix for all of my endpoints. And again, I provide that I have hello endpoint, and this endpoint is uh, get get endpoint get request to that endpoint is uh, handled by this complete hello akka. Uh, again, I have this path wire mock, and this wire mock again is uh, handled by calling the request to the to the wire mock, and. Again, the, the this most um, most interesting part of this example is test endpoint, and as you can see, this endpoint is really really messy, because first uh, first of course in the end I return this info object, but before that, I need to get segment of the path, I need to get parameter. I need to get header value, and after that, after that, I have this those all values necessary to build info object. So I look at this code and I really dislike it. Uh, however, let let me say one thing: this code written in pure Scala would would look like much better, but because of missing feature, that, that uh, because of that Scala provides some useful features, which are not available in Java. This code looks really, really messy. Uh, so, and before we move forward, be, before I move to the, uh, I be, before I move to the this bonus surprise bonus I prepared for uh, for you. Uh, let me show this uh, the rest of the code, because again I build my own web client HTTP client, and I use actor system because, as I said, we don't use actors directly, but again all our functions here you use use those actors system actors uh, concept under the hood. And because of the system, I can read configuration from the properties file, and I can create those wire mock host and wire mock wire mock port uh, fields, and using them, I can create this uh, this client. And as you can see here, uh, we have this complete uh, complete compl completion stage as a return type of this call wire mock, and this completion stage is util is utilized by the roots, uh, those methods used to handle endpoints. And here, this, here you can see the very simple, simple uh, code which is used to really trigger the, the HTTP request. Okay, so let's take a look at the main method of this, this example. So as you can see here, I need to create actor system myself. I need to create client uh, client object myself. I need to create Akka roots myself. And after that, I can start HTTP, cli uh, HTTP server. However, however uh, I need to write this start HTTP server myself. Of course, I just copied it from the internet, but as you can see, to start Akka application, I need to pro, uh, pre, uh, I need to provide much by boiler code, uh, boiler boilerplate code. Yes, that's that's the word that's the wording boilerplate code. So this is, in comparison to Spring, it's very messy and not not as friendly as Spring. So why why I am here? Why, I'm, why I am here? Because the title of the presentation is uh, pro presenting some alternative to Spring. And I strongly believe that you are not convinced that Akka can replace Spring in any case. Yes, I can agree with that. 
So that's why I would like to share uh, something, something new, something, something additional w which was not uh, mentioned in the abstract of this presentation. So I would like to show you Play Framework. Play Framework is bu built on top of the ACCA. So we use all, we use all those good features of ACCA, but without producing this messy code. So take a look at the example. Uh, this Play Framework app has different structure than ordinary Scala or Java app. So we have this app module, which, which stores all our code. And we have, as you can see, I have Hello Controller, which is used to handle incoming requests. And I also have conf directory, which stores roots file. This roots file is text, plain text, uh, text file, and I will show its content just, just, just in the moment. But before that, let me show this hello controller example class. So as you can see, I create just Java class, which extends controller class, which is provided by Play Framework. And here I have the, this annotation inject, and this inject annotation is just Javax, Javax uh, annotation, def uh, annotation defined in Javax uh, package. And I provide in this hello controller Akka HTTP client, and I will show that class in a moment. So here, as you can see, I have hello, hello method, which returns result object. And this result object is built using OK, OK function, and I provide in, uh, in as an argument of this OK function the value which is supposed to be returned by this, this, uh, this method. And as you probably can imagine, this endpoint, this method will be used to handle endpoint. Okay, next thing, as you can see here, is wire mock. And again, I have completion, compl completion stage as a result, result type. And it, and it means that this, this endpoint will be handled in asynchronous way. And the last, uh, and as you can see here, I just call method from Akka HTTP client. And here, as you can see, I have this, the most import, the most interesting part, the most interesting endpoint of this example. And as you can see, only two arguments, two, two parameters are provided as, an, as arguments of this method, ID and name. And the secret, uh, which is provided in header is read from the requests request object directly and this request uh, request method is provided by controller class i am extending and this is roots roots file and as you can see it's it has very simple simple uh, for, uh, schema so i define endpoint and i provide which uh, HTTP method is, is, suppo uh, is supported by this endpoint, and I provide the, uh, the, the function which should be used to handle this endpoint. And as you can see here, I have this wire mock endpoint, and uh, again, I call, I just call wire mock method. And here, as you can see, it's, it's a little bit of magic again. So I have this test endpoint and I provide that ID is path variable but as, uh, as an argument I provide also this name parameter and play can figure out it's by itself but by its own that this name parameter is request parameter so that's that's pretty handy okay and this HTTP client is very similar to the, that, that one I showed before. So I, I inject actor system. And this is very interesting because I don't create this actor system on my own anywhere. Moreover, I don't provide main, main method in that project. Play framework generates main method by, for us. And, and again, I have this singleton, singleton annotation. This is, again, annotation from Javax per package. And this singleton 
means that it, this ACCA HTTP client, should be singleton bin in, in, our, in our application. So this is this, again, call wire mock method, which returns completion stage. And this call, just single request, at it does, at it did in previous example, but it provides much more logic than provi was provided by the previous simpler, simpler uh, example. Okay, so let's, let me sum up. What time is it? Oh, it was, it was quicker than I supposed. Okay, so let me sum up. So I showed you a synchronous application, web application created in Spring, Spring Web. I showed you react, reactive asynchronous application created in Spring Web Flux. I showed that uh, this asynchronous reactive communication can be implemented using ACCA's ACCA framework, but I totally agree with you that ACCA used directly the code is messy and for sure won't replace, won't replace Spring. But to, to show you that ACCA has potential to, 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 to mean something more, I showed you play framework which is built on top of ACCA. But do you feel convinced that play framework can be alternative for Spring? Silence means agreement? I, I suppose so. So, as you, majority of you use Spring, and I believe all of you know Spring, so Spring has very big community. Spring is actively maintained and developed. There are so many different modules. We can use, we, we have so many connections. We have uh, anything we can imagine of, it's already implemented in Spring. So I strongly believe that Spring because of this, this, this feature, so big community and so many modules, is safe, is safe as a leader of, of this main framework for Java, Java world. And I talked about ACCA. So one disadvantage about ACCA I didn't say is that a year ago it changed licensing. Before that, ACCA had been open source, but since last Septem September last year, uh, you need to pay if you want to use ACCA for commercial uh, applications. However, however, it's not that bad because there are there is open source fork of ACCA called PECO, but for now we still don't know how big community around this PECO will be. This is Apache, Apache software, so it may be big, but we don't know for, uh, yet for sure. Uh, moreover, as you saw, ACCA code, pure ACCA code is messy and very, very difficult to read. So this is another thing which, uh, which uh, make you stick to Spring still. But, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take your time for, for, for just for, for, my, for me, my, my willing to be uh, admired, because my wife keeps saying that I give presentation because I love being admired. Uh, so, there is one, one string but I would like to say in the end of the presentation. So, ACCA provides very useful feature especially if you want to process big, big files. So there is ACCA streams module, module which can, uh, and using that, that module together with HTTP, uh, ACCA HTTP, you can upload to your service very, very, very big files. And this file doesn't need to be stored in the memory before you start processing it or saving it to some bucket or somewhere doing with, the, with that something else. So ACCA streams provide this streaming feature 
And as far as I saw, uh, as I looked for, for the internet, through the internet, uh, we can utilize something similar in Spring, but we need to use external Apache library to do that. So Akka has this, let's say, natively supported, nat natively handled. So I, I, I'm pretty sure that at least in case of processing big files, Akka streams can be very useful for you. So that's, I would like to you to remember that one thing, that, that we still can use HTTP for asynchronous communication. One of possibilities using Akka or Play Framework to implement that, that kind of solution. And moreover, Akka has the streams module which can help us handling very big files. So that's it from my side. I'm open, I'm open for your questions. In case, uh, before you start it, don't, 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 be, don't be so, so rash. Uh, I will be at the stand at the booth of my company, Grid Dynamics, so you can find me there. Of course, we have several nice, nice swag you can collect from us. Uh, and you can talk with me about my presentation and other topics related to my work. So, do you have any questions? Yes, 